Welcome to this Hey Legal Exclusive. Hey Legal Exclusive. Content that will keep you up to date and informed about the important legal issues of the day. Time is of the essence, so let's begin. I'm joined this afternoon by Sheriff Principal Anwar. Uh, good afternoon, Sheriff Principal. Good afternoon, Ali. Uh, How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm very well, thanks. Uh, excellent, thanks. And we're also joined this afternoon by Peter Lockhart, who will be known to many of you. Good afternoon, Peter. How are you? Yes, good afternoon, Ali. I'm fine, and thank you very much for inviting me on to this. It's, um, I'm really enjoying Hey Legal, and hopefully more will be oh. viewing our videos, or your videos, I should say, or checking it out online. Brilliant. Well, this, obviously, Peter, is going to be the best of all the videos that have been created thus far. <laughs> um, so, listen, thank you both so much for taking time out your busy diaries to talk to me today. Um, I wonder, Sheriff Principal, if I could just ask you at the outset, you've obviously taken office uh, in April of this year during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and can you just outline what challenges have you uh, faced uh, during that time? Well, you're, you're right, Ali, that um, I took up uh, office during the lockdown in April um, and there was certainly no hint on the horizon uh, when I was interviewed um, uh, for the post of what was going to come. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the challenges have been immense. Uh, yeah. there. I was starting from a position where there were only two courts that were open uh, in the sheriffdom. And we very quickly had to uh, consider how we were going to restart the business of the sheriffdom in all six courts. Uh, we focused first on civil business um, and uh, got systems in place in relation to that. Then we started to focus on summary crime and, of course, um, uh, then solemn crime. But I think I have to acknowledge um, that I've been very ably supported um, by the executive team at SCTS, uh, by my fellow sheriff's principal, um, by the court staff in the sheriffdom, in particular by the uh, sheriff clerks in each of the courts and by the sheriffdom uh, business manager, who all notwithstanding their own personal tragedies, their own personal circumstances, um, have understood the importance of the role that they all play in the administration of justice. Um, and indeed the sheriffs and the summary sheriffs in the sheriffdom have embraced the need for change. They've been only too willing to roll up their sleeves and to address the backlog in any way they can. It really has been a remarkable team effort. Uh, and in that endeavour, I've also been assisted uh, very ably by the Crown and by the Civil and Criminal Bar. Yeah. No, it's entirely unprecedented times, and it has obviously been a period of significant collaboration, which is brilliant to see because it's the only way to achieve outcomes uh, that, that will actually work. Um, what about yourself, Peter? How's it, how's it been for you over the last few months? Um, well, I think, first of all, um, I think that I would like to welcome Sheriff Anwar to our particular um, jurisdiction. And, and I have to say that, you know, she's gone out of her way. She, she came down to here. She's met our faculty. Um, and I think what we find is great is that she's very approachable and is very much keen for us to have our input into whatever's going on. So I think that's great. As far as um, the lockdown was concerned, obviously, it came as a bolt out of the blue. We were just, um, I think we were in court one day and then Ayrshire Court was closed. So it was quite a steep learning curve, I think, working from home. Although I have to say, once again, to the swing of it, I, um, you know, it worked well. I have fond memories of uh, addressing a sheriff one afternoon in my shorts and <laughs> uh, from, from, uh, from the living room which was a new um, one for me. I've been in the job 42 years, so I've never done that before, and I don't suspect I'll ever be doing it again. Uh, but we very quickly adapted. And again, I think uh, I think we all worked together. And basically, as the saying goes, we made it happen. And here we are. But I know we've got a, a backlog, but we have made tremendous strides. And I think, again, what we're going to talk about today, you know, is another step in the right direction. And it's a collaborative step. Yeah. Well, that all sounds very positive against a very difficult backdrop. So um, could we just move on to discussing the pilot initiative that you're both very heavily involved in, um, which took place obviously in South Strathclyde and Friesen Galloway. So could you just tell me who was involved and it's obviously now been rolled out nationwide. So why was it deemed to be a success, Chair of Principal? I think the short answer to that is that everyone was involved and everyone made it a success. Um, and it, I really can put it quite as succinctly as that. 
the Crown, the Defence, the Judiciary, the Court staff, we all worked collaboratively uh, to address the backlog of summary uh, crime um, in the Sheriffdom. Everybody recognised uh, that there was more that we could do locally um, to address some of the issues that are faced by the profession, uh, that are facing complainers, um, witnesses, and of course, facing accused persons uh, who wish to have uh, criminal proceedings resolved. Um, traditionally, of course, discussions uh, between the Crown and the Defence uh, and indeed between solicitors and clients uh, took place at the intermediate diet, and, and that was no longer possible. Uh, footfall required to be managed, uh, the safety of all court users and court staff required to be considered, and the Coronavirus Act dispensed with the need for an accused person uh, to attend an intermediate diet. So the question was, how can we facilitate the discussions which would ordinarily have taken place at the intermediate diet, um, and could we find a way to facilitate um, those discussions to facilitate early pleas um, and to identify those cases which are required to proceed to trial. And of course, we considered how we could remove the burden of written records. Uh, written records had been introduced as an immediate response to um, a, a problem, but it was a temporary measure. And it was always envisaged that this was going to be reviewed. So collectively, we agreed that we would arrange surgeries between the defence and the Crown. Where agreement was reached, there'd be no written record necessary and a diet would be assigned for the plea to be tendered. Um, and that meant that cases could be disposed of efficiently and early. Uh, why was it a success? Because everyone played their part. Um, everyone mm. rolled up their sleeves. Everyone understood the need for a different approach. Um, and I think it's important, in fact, that I record just how impressed I've been um, by the criminal bar who were willing to adapt and to embrace the initiative um, in this sheriffdom and, of course, the Crown for its willingness uh, to uh, embrace the initiative, to make deputies available for the surgery, um, and sur deputies who took time to prepare for the surgery in advance because they knew what cases they would be there to discuss. Yeah. Peter, can I ask for your input, please? Yeah, I, I absolutely endorse all of that. And uh, we, we in there, we followed uh, Hamilton. Uh, Mark Hamlin had really got the ball going, and you know we, we knew early doors that there was there was, there was a success story in the making there and um, you know we, we it's a smaller jurisdiction but again um, we wanted to make sure that we had a deputy an experienced deputy who could basically come to the surgery and make the decisions that were important and I think you know it's worth remembering that they are able to make these decisions and what I think struck me and my fellow practitioners here and there was the realistic approach that the deputy took, which was, you know, let's get a plea, let's get this started, and it proved very successful. And, it, and in many ways, it was the success of that which led into, which is now the next phase, which will cover the whole of Scotland. Yeah. And, and for, for those who, who might not know, when did you actually start the pilot and how long did it run for and what were the successes of it in terms of numbers? Uh, well, the pilot's been running for a number of months now, um, and uh, in terms of numbers, uh, we have over 400 cases across the uh, sheriffdom uh, which um, have been resolved as a result of the pilot. Uh, so it, it's, it's um, for, for what really was not too much effort uh, to get this surgery started, um, it really has uh, reaped rewards. Yeah. I think another key element, Ali, was the fact that the actual process was simple. You, you know, you basically, you, you, you provided a couple of names of cases you wanted to chat to. The deputy had the papers, you pitched up uh, and you resolved it. And, you know, when you think of that target, that, that's an amazing target that we have achieved because that's 400 cases taken out of trials courts, which is really, you know, another success part of this whole strategy. And, uh, no, I, I think it... Um, it did work well, and as I say, it was a joint effort. Yeah. And do you think, you, you mentioned about this operating in smaller jurisdictions. So as we now look, or this is obviously now being rolled out nationwide, was, are you aware or was there any thought specifically given to larger um, jurisdictions where there might not be the ability to have such close um, contact easily with, the Crown, or there may be more issues around things like disclosure, which is perhaps more um, the experience in Glasgow and Edinburgh? 
Well, the new practice note, uh, the, the Lord Justice General's practice note, uh, provides for um, PIDMs or pre-intermediate diet meetings. Uh, and the, uh, there should be no question of there being no deputy available. The Crown have created an online booking system to help defence agents uh, to manage uh, their diaries. Uh, the Crown will know in advance what cases to be discussed at the PIDM, um, and they'll have an opportunity to prepare for that discussion. Um, the defence agent will know in advance uh, that the discussion is to take place. The defence agent will have an opportunity to take his or her client's instructions. So really, there should be no question of there being no access to a deputy. Indeed, having a, 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 a mandated, as it were, a pre-arranged slot at which the case is to be discussed means that there will be a deputy available for that discussion, rather than mm -hmm. agents playing what has traditionally been telephone tennis, where you leave a, mess mm -hmm. a message, you try to call the Crown and you're waiting for a response, or there are emails that are going back and forth uh, and no opportunity to, to, to actually engage and resolve an issue. Um, so I think actually that um, if everybody plays their part uh, and these meetings um, will be meaningful and they will result in the types of successes that we've seen in the pilot in the sheriffdom. Yeah. Peter, for, for what do you think the benefit to defence agents is here or is it not just something that perhaps increases the workload of, of a defence agent? Yeah, well, I think there's two elements to that. So let me let me deal with the question of the benefits and then consider whether there's going to be an increased workload. So what are the benefits for the defence agent? Well, first of all, there's the time saving of, of agents sitting through lengthy ID cores. Uh, and those of us that have practised over the years will know exactly what I'm talking about there. You know, you could sit for several hours and maybe only have two or three cases and then find out nothing really happens in the cases. Secondly, and again, this was a fundamental aspect of this, was to minimise physical contact with others at our course. And as you know, intermediate diets were big courts because you had a large number of accused, and, and as with most courts, they have their hangers on and families and all the rest of it. So you, you tended to have very large numbers of people attending the courts. Um, and obviously, we now moved away from that. Uh, again, you asked me earlier on about the changes, but the biggest change, of course, has been now there's very little client contact. All of it's done by by phone or, or video. And uh, again, the, the benefit is that the ability to be able to talk about a case and adjust the plea, I think will be much easier because in the sense, if, if you imagine when you want to get some medical advice and you contact the doctor, Rarely will you be able to catch the doctor or speak to him over the phone. She arranged an appointment. And the, the PIDMs will be your opportunity to go along with your cases and discuss the ones, and the deputy will be there. Um, and again, if you think back to your days in court, you know, if, uh, as Sheriff Principal Anwar has mentioned, the ping pong trying to get a hold of a fiscal or emails that made them busy and not the time to answer. And then you would pitch up at the ID, you know, and you'd maybe have about 20 or 30 agents hovering around the poor deputy who's harassed in any event, uh, and you're trying to get in to get your case sorted out, it just didn't really work. Um, you know, so all of that is a way. I think you know, that that is a benefit that you will have a, a proper engagement with the prosecutor to try and resolve the matter. So um, I, I think it will, as we've certainly seen in the uh, surgeries that have operated here in South Daft Clyde and Peace and Galloway, that more cases will resolve. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of that. So these are the benefits. Your question then was about the increased workload. And I think to answer that question, you need to really look and think about what, what, is the, what was the procedure between a not guilty and an intermediate diet. So your procedure was you pled not guilty, you diaried your intermediate diet, your dates. Number two, you lodged your legal aid application. You followed that up with the appropriate documentation, whatever was necessary. Or if it's a private client, you, you negotiated a package and made sure that payment was coming in. You wrote to the fiscal for your disclosure. You got your disclosure in. You went over that with the client. That might lead into possible um, defence witnesses being recognised, productions or whatever. And you then prepared for your intermediate diet. And these are all steps that we are doing all the time and should be doing uh, in a timely fashion. Now, 
The only difference now is instead of pitching up at the ID at the ID court, you'll have your your uh, bidder. And I think sometimes the best way to look at it is this. Because I know a lot of agents have said, well, we've got all these different dates. It's confusing. It's not confusing. You get your trial diet. Well, we all know what a trial diet is. Forget about the intermediate diet for a minute. Just concentrate on the PIDM. The PIDM is something that's going to happen two weeks prior to the ID. And that's when, you know, you need to be prepared. You need to have your client's instructions and you need to be ready to pitch up and negotiate if that's the case. Or come along with your special defences or whatever it is, unless the witness doesn't say, look, Here's what we think are the issues. This case is not going to resolve. We're going to have to go to trial. So I personally don't really think when you analyse that, I don't actually think there really is additional work. It's just doing work in a different way and hopefully a more efficient and organised way. That's what I believe. Yeah. I can see the benefits of the plenty experience of horrendously busy intermediate diet courts where it's just impossible to actually do much of the discussion, as you said, you know, you just simply can't really progress the case. And in the past, very often, the case would possibly just be continued to a further intermediate diet for discussions, which may thereafter never be able to take place because of the telephone, bing pong or whatever, uh, and you just simply can't progress things. Uh, one aspect that I, uh, I hadn't thought of before we were talking today, but is just about, the, about gaining instructions early enough from an accused because often um, with an accused having usually to attend an intermediate diet, that would mean they were present. That would mean that something was happening and there was a chance with them to discuss, uh, for many of them, what they wanted to do in relation to the case. How has that been in relation to the pilot? Well, I, I think uh, as far as, I mean, obviously we, we all have had and we have clients who are, are difficult, they just won't engage. And, and that, that may be something we just have to deal with. In those circumstances, if they don't engage, then they're going to have to appear and they're going to have to give an explanation to the sheriff as to why they haven't been engaging. But I, I think that I think the change that I would sense there, Ali, is this, that since we've moved away from sort of formal meetings in office and having clients to come in, and again, when you live in a rural area, I'm practising in air, a lot of my clients are in villages outside air, if they're on benefits, it's expensive and it can be time consuming to, to come to air. Whereas now we can conduct these pre pidim or intermediate diets, get the instructions, go over disclosure. That can all be done by phone. And I actually find that, you know, when I arrange that with the client, uh, I'll normally write to them or email them and say, look, I want to go with this with you. What, when does it suit you? And I have found that the level of engagement has been much higher when you're doing it by phone because they don't have to come out of their, they don't have to come out of their homes and that kind of thing. So I'm not saying it's going to work in every case. Yeah. Equally to I think there will be a degree of um, I think the profession need to be alert to this, and I think you need to advise clients early doors. Although you're probably not going to have to appear at the intermediate diet, you need to cooperate with me. And if you're not prepared to do that, there will be consequences. So mm. hopefully people will see the advantage of that and will engage with their solicitor. I think it's important too to recognise that um, whilst traditionally it has been the case that clients have given instructions at the intermediate diet, we cannot have the accused persons coming to intermediate diets. The, the Coronavirus Act dispenses with the requirement for an accused person to attend. We'd have to have hearings about whether or not an accused person requires to attend intermediate diet. And all of that would fly in the face of the need to minimise the football. So we have to be uh, a little bit more uh, creative about how, uh, or rather solicitors have to be a little bit more creative about how they're going to take their client's instructions they cannot rely upon that date, the intermediate diet, being the face-to-face -face discussion with their client mm -hmm. because there is no requirement for their client to attend. Yeah. And I'm sure, I mean, I think across all sorts of legal work, there's been a strong desire for people engaging with their solicitors to just to use technology. I know that's been a necessity, but it's also welcome uh, in many regards because it just makes something easier for people. Uh, and as, as long as there's no concerns about, you know, instructions or uncertainties at the other end when it's not a face-to-face -face meeting, then it works perfectly well. 
I think also too, Ali, you know, the fact of the matter is during lockdown, for many people, you know, it, it was second nature to be, you know, communicating through video links or, or phones. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it will, uh, I think it will, I'm not saying it will be absolutely 100% perfect, but I think it will work reasonably well. I'm, I'm confident of that. Yeah. I can ask, what is the position if a defence agent has already agreed a plea uh, before the PIDM? You know, how, is, how is that managed? Well, that's funny you asked that. I posed that question to Chair Prince Weimar because I had had that. I have that situation too, where um, I've got pleas already adjusted. I've contacted the Crown and sorted it out. So, um, Chair Prince Weimar will correct me if I'm wrong, but it's actually in in the um, in the Chair, uh, sorry, in the Lord President's uh, practice note. Um, there's guidance there. I think it's in and it's noted. Note uh, uh, five on page two, but basically what will happen is, although you've agreed a plea, you will still um, you will still arrange a, a pidum, but it'll be a short call. I suppose in a way it's just basically to check that your client hasn't changed their mind for whatever reason, and and that that plea that you're talking about that has been agreed will be tendered at the intermediate diet, and the deputy will then be able to do the paperwork, which will signal to the court. Uh, that that's that that's going to happen, and obviously the transition, you know, that that's going to happen a bit during the transition uh, period. But um, you know, in due course, it will become more straightforward. Right. And can I ask, uh, in relation to situations where there's what might be considered undue delays in progressing trials because of witness difficulties or disclosure or whatever that may be, how does the defence raise these issues with the court? Well, well I think that, I'm sorry, Sheriff, but I'll let you go first. Well, the, the point I was going to make is that um, uh, if the uh, Crown are seeking to adjourn a trial diet and the defence don't agree that this trial diet should be adjourned, well, that is a position which can be put to a sheriff and the intermediate diet can call. So uh, the, the practice note allows for that, Lord Justice General's practice note allows for that. Um, so where there's not an agreed position, the intermediate diet will call. Uh, inevitably, um, there are likely to be some delays. Um, uh, it's always been the case that there have been some delays in disclosure, for example, in relation to CCTV or forensic reports in particular. Um, and the practice note isn't designed to address all the perceived delays that there are in the uh, management of summary criminal business. Um, but uh, where delays are known, parties can either agree that the trial is being adjourned, in which case the defence agent doesn't require to attend court, and the matter is dealt with by way of the Crown's report, or if there's a disagreement on that, the matter can call before the sheriff. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and I think the other thing there is, you know, probably in a majority of cases um, where the Crown have not been able to achieve full disclosure, it will be a matter of agreement that, that we, we adjourn. So what we don't want to find is that we uh, start churning Pidham's uh, and ID. So we're not going to do that. So if it's a case where the Crown genuinely have not, have not been able to produce whatever it is and we're in agreement with that, then the default position will be it will be a jump. And as Sheriff Principal and I said, that will save time. Uh, obviously, if it happened a number of times and the defence didn't want to agree to that, then we have the opportunity to, to address the Sheriff. And of course, that will work both ways because there may be times where we're waiting for a report, might be a, a, a drugs, a defence drugs expert report, that kind of thing, where we say, well, we're not quite ready. So the trial will be adjourned, new dates will be fixed, and second time round, hopefully it will resolve itself or continue to trial. And, then, and of course, again, in doing that, rather than continuing things in more of a hope over expectation, it means that these particular trial diets now become free and they can be utilised maybe for custody trials, etc. Yes. And, and that really is one of the principal objectives of the practice note, is to ensure that the trial slots are used effectively. And that will be key to the management of the backlog, is to ensure that trials that are set down for a particular day proceed on that day, and that we're not having um, pleas tendered on the morning of the trial, which carries, of course, with it all the unnecessary journeys that have been undertaken by witnesses, complainers, um, and indeed by the accused. Yes. Well, I see obviously attacking the backlog of, of trials is, is key, really. Um, and there was information released today by Scottish courts just indicating, I have to say, I mean, tremendous 
um, figures in relation to uh, levels of business that are taking place uh, despite all the difficulties. So there's um, evidence led that some of the charges are shared, of course, are now 83% of the average monthly pre-COVID levels, which was a surprise uh, to me. Um, overall, new cases registered has risen to 78% of the average monthly pre-COVID level. Um, petitions 15% higher than they were in advance of lockdown and that the High Court's operating at 67% of its average monthly pre-COVID level with obviously the introduction of the remote um, jury centres. So th these are obviously great figures. Um, I think just to, for the sake of completeness, it's saying currently that the average waiting period for trials has doubled to 12 months in the High Court, 15 months in Sheriff Solomon, and six months in Sheriff Summary. So there is obviously that issue, but it seems that these steps with, uh, that have been taken, PIDM, remote jury centres, etc., are obviously having uh, an impact. And uh, something that's perhaps little known is that working closely with the Crown in this sheriffdom, um, the Crown have uh, made deputies available so that we can run, I think since August, 77 additional summary trials courts. That's additional to what our normal court programme pre-COVID would have been. And therefore, there's quite a lot of work going on behind the scenes. And, and each of these steps taken into account in, cum in, in accumulation will eventually help us to address uh, the backlog. Yeah. And I think, Ali, again, a personal experience, I, I mean, I've, I've had many trials that have gone on. And I think, you know, with the time slots that were given, my, my experience has been both in, in certainly here in Komarna where I practice most, is that, you know, they run to time. You've got a time slot at 10. And the witnesses have turned up. We've got on with it. Likewise, if it's an afternoon um, trial, uh, you know, generally speaking, they um, they have gone ahead. There haven't been the witness difficulties, I think, that a lot of people thought might happen. So, you know, I, I, and I think these figures reflect that, which is really, I think, tremendous. Like yourself, I was surprised when I first heard these figures, but now I see it in practice. Yeah. But clearly, a bit like the success in the High Court of timetabling or whatever, it may just be that out of this obviously very difficult situation that we're in that comes a lot of good. But the system's going to be refined by this experience and, and hopefully, I don't think there's any prospect of it retreating back into the inefficiencies of before of showing that when there's a need, things can clearly be done. Um, so and can I just check, in relation to the local bar associations, is, uh, do, is there any formal channels of communication with them or is that just on an ad hoc basis in each share of them? Well, I think that's managed by uh, each sheriff principal in his or her uh, sheriffdom. And I know that there is a lot of engagement with the local bar taking place. In this sheriffdom, um, I hold, uh, I think, fortnightly video conferences with the deans of the faculty right. in um, each of the uh, local courts. Um, I update them on what's going on um, and uh, get feedback wherever I can. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's remarkable. It's just the level of engagement I'm getting from the deans is just remarkable. Yeah. There seems to have been very positive feedback uh, in relation to that, and I think it plays such an important role in getting everyone on side, really, in terms of solutions. Um, and Sheriff Principal, I believe there's, there's a video and two question and answer sessions in relation to the PIDMs. Can you just explain a bit more about those, please? Yes. Um, the Lord Justice General recognised, of course, that we couldn't have uh, the usual uh, seminars or roadshow when you might want to discuss um, a practice note with practitioners. Um, so it was agreed that instead we produce a video. Um, and uh, the video is a short 10 minute video and it explains the purpose of the practice note and how uh, the practice note will work in practice. Um, there is also, uh, we've organised two question and answer sessions. Um, one is on the 23rd of November and one is on the 26th of November. And I'd encourage any practitioners who may be watching this, who have questions about the process, to join either of those two events. And we've also produced a very easy to follow flowchart, um, which is also available on the Law Society's website. Um, and that provides a really an at a glance view of how this practice notice to work in practice. Brilliant. Ali, can I come in and do a quick commercial yeah. break? <laughs> <laughs> um, just on, the, well, the two points there, the video is very good. And I would encourage practitioners to, to see it, particularly to, uh, as a number raised, you know, about the practicalities of booking uh, time slot, and, and that's shown, and it, and it makes it nice and simple. 
Um, the other thing too is the uh, question and answer session. Um, there's myself will be on it, um, Ian Moyer uh, from the Law Society's Legal Aid Committee, uh, Mary Louise Fox from SLAB, uh, and of course uh, our very own uh, Sheriff Principal who keep us all in order. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's, it's one to put into your diary, so do please join us either Monday or next Thursday. Brilliant. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. It's been really informative. Is, is there anything I should say that we haven't covered that you would like to just add before we finish up? Don't no? think so. Peter. Okay. Oh, can you. I just ask this? This is, this is a bit of a curveball because I didn't, I didn't flag this up at the start, but is there, has there been, on a personal level, have there been any, despite the backdrop, have there been any positive aspects of lockdown for either of you that you've enjoyed? Um, gosh, I, I, what I've really enjoyed is the family time. Yeah. I, I've yeah. really enjoyed spending more time with the children um, who are forced into spending time with their parents. <laughs> um, and so um, there has been this enforced family time and it's been wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, I would have to say I enjoyed the, the well, I say enjoyed, but the, the time in lockdown when we had the lovely weather and we could go out for a nice cup of coffee out in the garden was was pleasant. But I would also say that, you know, I, I, I've been in practice for a long time and I think it, it's been heartening to see the changes in the way our legal profession and our criminal justice system or, and our entire justice system really has adapted so well to some very, very difficult uh, conditions. And I, I think that's uh, a credit to everybody involved in our criminal justice system. Yes, yeah, absolutely. System. I shouldn't just say, I don't just mean the criminal justice, you know, I mean the entire justice system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's, let's not lose sight of civil practitioners in this discussion. Civil practitioners have done an absolutely fabulous job of dealing with the vast majority of civil business um, online. Yeah. It's been done either by video conferencing or by telephone conferencing, and a number of them have taken part in um, virtual proofs, um, virtual fatal accident inquiries. Um, so you know, the the um, the understanding that we need to do things differently, and the willingness to adapt to change has really been wonderful to see. Yeah, but I think there have been some positives. You know, I think exactly as you say, Sheriff Principal, about the family time, and you know, it, it does bring into sharp focus how much time in advance of all this that we spent hurrying about, chasing our tails, doing a lot of things. That once that, that the ability to do so is actually removed, in a sense, it does make you realise that you can slim things down in a positive way. And I think that also links to, to, to perhaps this, the criminal justice system to say, well, look, we're, we're just there's a lot of churn, there's a lot of stuff going on here that just can be resolved. It just needs the moment to occur when it actually does get done rather than talked about. And hopefully this is a positive that comes from, from what's happened. Absolutely. Well, listen, thank you both so much uh, for your time. We really appreciate it. We will post this onto Hey Legal uh, quickly and I wish you every success with the question and answer sessions and thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Ali. That was a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. We hope this Hey Legal exclusive content has been of value to you. Hey Legal exclusive. Follow us please on YouTube and Twitter and create a free account on our website to stay informed and entertained about Scottish legal matters as they happen.